Hi, I'm Andy Stevens, and this is the Home Building and Renovating Guide to Buying a Reciprocating Saw. So one of these, reciprocating saw, again it does exactly what it says on the tin. This is the blade, which is interchangeable, and you can cut anything from wood, steel, plastics, uh, metal. It's very much a demolition tool, you, you don't use it on second fix things, but it's primarily, this saw goes back and forth very, very quickly to cut various different materials. So you'll often see this at the beginning of a job, a sort of a rip out stage or demo. Uh, because of being fairly heavy duty, you're not gonna see it on second fix sort of fine cuts as much. This is perfect for cutting out old rafters on roofs, battens on roofs. It's also really good for, especially on this job, we've got lard and plaster ceilings. You can run this blade through the lards to start pulling them down. Uh, and also this is, depending on the blade, you can use this on steel, plastic, metals, and other materials as well. So a couple of things to look out for when buying a reciprocating saw. Again, corded against cordless. Uh, I got this just because it was cheap, because it's corded. Uh, one thing though, you bearing in mind, a lot of this you'll use overhead height on roofs. This weighs quite a bit. Um, the, the newer ones um, are a lot lighter, but pick it up and have a play with it. If you're working above head height, you wanna make sure it's not too heavy. Um, the other thing, personally, I've learned the hard way, this cable isn't very long. So if you're up on a roof cutting out rafters, you don't want this cable. You're dragging extension leads all around the roof. It's a pain. So I would go with a cordless one because I'm finding this a bit of a pain, to be honest. The cordless one's also a little bit lighter. Um, the other things to look out for are the ease of changing a blade. Again, this is a few years old now. Um, it's quick release, but it's not brilliant. Uh, one thing, uh, when you're looking at them, check the weight and also have a go at changing blades because they can blunt quite easy on old timbers. Brands to look at when buying these, again, if you're using it occasionally, you know, once or twice a week, um, you don't need to spend serious money. I think with this, you want something that's gonna last. It is, you know, kicked about on a roof, dropped off scaffolding. I don't think you wanna go budget entry. So mid-range, something like this, Bosch, uh, Makita, DeWalt, Milwaukee, Metabo, similar brands, mid, mid range is where you want to start. Uh, I've had this a few years and apart from it being corded, it's a great bit of kit. So I would sort of look at mid range as a bare minimum to make sure it lasts. When you're buying this, accessory wise, you've got to obviously pick the blades for the material you're cutting. The great thing is it's got it written on each blade. So even us trays aren't going to get it wrong. Wood, plastic, metals, even block work you can cut with these. It's important you get the right blade. If you don't, you can have serious problems. But very clearly it says it on each one, so just make sure you select the right one for the material you want to cut. So like any building work, especially with power tools, PPE is important. With this, I think the main thing to look out for is eye protection. There's different levels of goggles and protective glasses. When you're cutting woods, you can get sawdust, bits of timber to flick up to make sure your eyes are protected. It goes without saying, this is a pretty sharp blade and it does go back and forth pretty quickly. So some sort of protection on your hands, some strong gloves. Um, and also, just a little tip, make sure you're not cutting the bit of wood towards you, because if you suddenly go through it quicker than you think, next point of call is your leg. So always bear that in mind, that when you're cutting this, you're cutting away from yourself, not towards you. Cord less are a bit more, and if you do buy it, you want two batteries minimum and a charger. So one on the go, which will give you most of a day, depending on the ampage, uh, and then another one charging. The other thing is stock up on blades, because they do go quickly. Bearing in mind, old rafters on a house like this, which is 1920s, are full of old nails, and also the timber was so much better it was grown slower, the rings are closer together, it's tougher timber. So these blunt a lot quicker than using it on modern day timber. So they're the main things to look out for. There's no handles, um, maintenance is, is pretty minor. Um, just keep, keep an eye on it. Um, mainly just check, another tip, each time you put a blade in, just give it a little trial run away from you because once this starts going, if it's not in properly, it can cause accidents. 
So maintenance on a reciprocating saw, it's fairly robust, so the casing on it is fairly well covered. Um, it doesn't suck in the sawdust and take it out through an extraction point or into a filter. So the main thing is the quick release or the bit at the front to change the blade. Keep an oil on that. Uh, it can stiffen up. Um, this one's a bit old now. It could do with a bit of WD-40 or similar to keep it lubricated. Um, but really, it's very low maintenance. You don't need to do a lot with these. One other thing that it can be used for, again, cordless is a lot better than dragging this around with an extension lead. This can be used in the garden. Uh, branches on trees, uh, shrubs, bushes. Uh, it's with a wooden blade, it will cut. Um, obviously things in the garden are alive, so it'll take a little bit longer because they're green, um, but you can use this in the garden, but don't do what I did and get corded because you're dragging around a lead all day long. So there we are, a comprehensive guide to buying a reciprocating saw. For more advice on tools, materials, techniques and products for building, visit homebuilding.co.uk.